about Toby. Toby is high maintenance, let me tell you. And he's in the office and so is Missy right now. Okay. Yes. Hi, honey. Hi, honey. Missy wants me to pet her. So we're going to get into tonight. Um, and we're going to do a deep dive here. And it is a prophetic warning as well. So we're going to start and we're going to go back to January 2nd, 2022, because I had had a dream back then. And this dream has a lot to do with what we have seen transpire and happen. But in the dream, it was dark and there were three large, powerful demons that stood before me. They were not allowed to come near me, though. The first was muscular, large horns, deep, loud voice. This could have been Baal. I'm not even kidding you because Baal is the bull. So deep, loud voice, body like fire and could turn into a fireball with a lion letting out a gut wrenching roar. Uh, there were two other demons. One was silverish, looked like it was wearing armor. And then there was a third that was a darker figure and may have been wearing a cloak. So the first demon with the thunderous voice and the, I believe the horns boasted, as did the others, about what they were going to do in the courts as Esther shows up. Each demon represents a different issue in the Supreme Court or the court system. Demons represent a mock trial um, and that basically they were going to put the people through a mock trial, that the people were about to embark on a mock trial, a trial run, a trial and testing. And the government and the worldly order wanted to see how far they could go with all of this. And I wrote, entering the time of Daniel. That's what I wrote back then. And I said, we were going to get into another teaching on that. And then basically you had in the time of Daniel, right? Because I wrote entering the time of Daniel, you had a Prince of Persia type of demon that was trying to block. So basically in Daniel's uh, account, there was for 21 days, the Prince of Persia withstood Gabriel and Gabriel had a whistle for Michael to come in, who's the muscle and move this uh, Prince of Persia entity out of the way. So if we entered the time of Daniel, we have a very similar situ situation happening in the nation where a Prince of Persia type of entity was trying to block the United States of America was trying to block the way forward. Right. And you had during that time too Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego who would not compromise before Nebuchadnezzar. And they were, they worked with Daniel. You had 21 days of fasting and prayer uh, with Daniel uh, for the angel to show up, the angel Gabriel to come um, and, and basically give Daniel his answer that he had been praying for. And that's when the Prince of Persia engaged and he had to be moved out of the way because the second Daniel prayed, the answer was dispatched. The Prince of Persia held it up in the realm of the spirit for 21 days. And that principality had a hold on the leadership over that entire area. Okay. And with this dream from January 2nd, 2022, I had written too, this has to do with the unborn, with a mock trial, with a trial run. We are in a time very much like Daniel lived in a Babylonian pagan regime that is hostile to believers. Babylon was surrounded. Now you're going to see how all this connects in a moment because we're going to get into how a gate was opened in the United States because I'm laying the groundwork for this. Babylon was surrounded by a massive wall over 100 feet thick and 300 feet high. Okay, so it would take months of sieging to try to breach a wall like that. And Babylon was ruled at that time by Nebuchadnezzar. Do you know Nebuchadnezzar ruled 45 years in Babylon? 45. Okay, keep that in mind. 45. Um, basically, ancient historians said that the walls around the city were 60 miles long. Um, 300 feet high, 80 feet thick, and 35 feet into the ground so enemies could not tunnel under uh, in, in order to, to be, besiege the city. And don't you find that interesting that even the Babylonians understood that walls work? Isn't that interesting that even the Babylonians back then understood that walls keep out intruders? Very simple principle. And they put their walls into the ground, too. They just didn't build them up. They built them below. So in the book of Isaiah and Jeremiah, uh, they both prophesied the destruction of Babylon. And in 539, Cyrus, who had taken over 
media. Cyrus took over media. Remember, Trump has been compared to a modern day Cyrus. Cyrus took over media. He took over Persia, Iran, and he took over Elam. Um, and he led his army into Babylon and he captured Babylon without a long drawn out battle. So keep that in mind. Cyrus captured media. Cyrus captured Persia. Trump is known as a modern day Cyrus. You know, also in Babylon at the time, there was um, there was a lot of uh, sexual immorality. There were pagan temples. There was temple prostitution. There were sacrifices to false gods. In fact, in Daniel chapter 3, Nebuchadnezzar erects a golden 90-foot tall uh, statue in the nation to be worshipped by all. Um, and about five days before the Democratic National Convention happened in Chicago, in Sugarland, Texas, all of a sudden... A 90-foot-tall golden statue of Hanuman, a false god, half man, half monkey, is erected. The only taller statue now is the Statue of Liberty. And there it is. And that golden statue that Nebuchadnezzar erected in Babylon was 90 feet tall. It was the same size as this statue that has now been erected in Sugarland, Texas. Hanuman is a false Hindu god as Kamala Devi... Devi means goddess in Hindu, as Kamala Devi is set, it was set to be anointed as the nominee. This 90 foot tall golden statue, as in the time of Daniel, because remember, in that dream with those three demons boasting what they were going to do, I had written, we're entering the time of Daniel, and this has to do with the unborn. Well, then we see certain markings of the time of Daniel begin to pop up in the United States of America. Now, I'm going to fast forward with you to March 2023. You have the Covenant School shooting in Tennessee. This is all going to make sense as we go forth. Why Tennessee? Why Nashville, Tennessee? At a school named Covenant, this horrific act. I'll tell you why. The city of Nashville became known for the many institutions of higher education that were found in there and was given the nickname the Athens of the South. The temple of Zeus resided in Athens, Greece. The throne of Satan, right? The temple of Zeus, Zeus was Satan. They knew him as Zeus in Greece. Nashville is called the Athens of the South. So when the enemy wanted to shed blood to affect the nation, he zeroed in on the place known as the Athens of the South and a school named Covenant because that is what the enemy was after. And the school was attacked by a transgender who was demonically deceived and influenced into doing the enemy's bidding to shed blood in the same place named after the city where the temple of Zeus resided. So this is why you had the shooting strategically by the enemy happen before the indictments came down so that innocent blood could be shed in Nashville, Tennessee. Now... There's a man by the name of Dr. Crum and Don A. Clement sent me this video about him speaking about certain projects that affected our nation. And this is why we see this. Is why I'm going over all this with you first, because this is why we see all these things happening now. And Don A., my dear friend, sent it to me. And I'm going to talk to you about some things that Dr. Crum said, because the Lord helped me tie other things to this. So things that Dr. Crumb said, the Lord showed me other events that tied to it. So Dr. Crumb is a believer and he headed up Project Morningstar for the U.S. government. Now, Project Morningstar was they gathered prophets together and they gave them hard intelligence and they asked them to seek the Lord with this hard intelligence. And in fact, Kim Clement was a part of Project Morningstar. So he taught, he goes back to the 1960s and I'm going to tell you some of the things he said and then some of the things the Lord showed me. So in the 1960s, the Soviet Union started training agents to astral project and remote view to see classified documents in Washington, D.C. This is documented. This happened June 25th, 1962. So in the 1960s, 
the Soviets start doing this. They start stealing classified information through astral projection and remote viewing and occultic activity. In June 25th, 1962, after the Soviets start doing this, prayer is taken out of school. So <clears throat> the Supreme Court decision in Engel versus Vitali comes down. So prayer in school across America was helping to keep a gate closed that the enemy desperately wanted to open. So first a covering or a cover must be lifted to expose the gates lock or code. This was the event that did that, the taking of prayer out of schools. Because the enemy, when this happened, the enemy very craftily moved in the United States of America. So once that covering was off the lock of the gate, the enemy had further access to try to open the gate. So the enemy doesn't attempt to first, after, after prayer is taken out of schools, the enemy doesn't attempt to manipulate the United States military first to open the gate. He's got to entice them instead. He's got to tempt them uh, before he can manipulate them. So the enemy, because communist communism at its core is dark and satanic, the enemy entices the Soviets because of the Cold War to remote view at Astral Project and gets them into agreement with that. So the Soviets launch this program um, and begin to steal the classified documents from the United States. Okay. So this happens. Then prayer is taken out of school. Now I'm going to show you the order of this. 17 months after prayer is taken out of school, November 22nd, 1963, John F. Kennedy is assassinated. That he was assassinated. I believe, what state was he, was it Texas that he was assassinated in? What state was John F. Kennedy assassinated? If anybody knows in the chat, to put in the chat, because this is all going to tie together then. I think it was, I think it was te Texas. Thank you, everyone. Okay. So keep that in mind because that 90 foot tall statue was erected in Texas. Okay. So 17 months after prayer is taken out of school, November 22nd, 1963, John F. Kennedy is assassinated. That was the blood that needed to be shed for the enemy to open a gate. So every ratifying of an agreement or covenant with the kingdom of darkness requires the shedding of blood. More so at times, innocent blood. So when the government of the U.S. realizes what is happening, so now we've had Soviets astral projecting remote viewing. Prayer gets taken out of schools. John F. Kennedy is assassinated. After all these things happen, the U.S. government realizes that the Soviets are remote viewing and astral projecting and stealing classified intelligence. This is all documented. And instead of seeking the Lord out to righteously stop this, because this is what Dr. Crum was relaying, because of fear and competition, fear is capitalized, the two main building blocks of the occult, the United States launches their own program in remote viewing and astral projection in an attempt to outdo the Soviets. This program was known as Project Stargate or Project Looking Glass. Fort Meade had an abandoned building that they used for Project Stargate. Now, it's interesting because Fort Meade, if you go back in scripture, even though it's spelt a different way, the Medes were from media. So, and there goes Toby laying down like a seal. The Medes were from media, biblically speaking. And the Medes were in the area of Iran and they lived in media. So it's interesting they would choose Fort Meade, of all places, uh, to launch Project Stargate. And Project Stargate only had 15% accuracy over 23 years. But what happened was this. Project Stargate unlocked a gate in the United States of America the devil had been working for decades to get open. This gate was keeping out and restraining the powers, principalities, and rulers of the darkness of this world who were out for blood and out to pervert creation and the gospel on a mass scale. They wanted the minds of the younger generation to do their bidding, and they wanted the blood of the younger generation for their power to grow. 
Project Stargate, as it was named, opened a massive gate over America. Deuteronomy 419 says, And beware that you do not raise your eyes toward heaven and see the sun and the moon and the stars, all the hosts of heaven, and let yourselves be led astray and worship them and serve them, which the Lord your God is allotted to all the peoples under the whole heaven. So I'll tell you how they opened the gate. So the definition of star is any celestial body visible at night from earth as twinkling points of light, right? And interestingly enough, Jesus is called the morning star, right? But the enemy is referred to as something similar in Isaiah 14, 12 through 14. How you have fallen from heaven, morning star, son of the dawn. So it's morning star, son of the dawn. That's how it's differentiated from Jesus Christ being called the morning star. You have been cast down to the earth. You who once laid low the nations, you who said your heart, I will ascend to the heavens. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. Stargate. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit enthroned on the mount of the assembly on the utmost heights of Mount Zaphon. I will ascend above the tops of clouds. I will make myself like the most high. That's in Isaiah. Now, so you have a star, uh, which by definition, right, is a celestial body visible from earth and a gate, a movable barrier, a means of an entrance or ex or exit or a starting gate. Starting gate has stargate written within it. And a starting gate is a mechanically operated barrier used as a starting device for a race. And stargate is within starting gate. And Satan is racing against almighty God's schedule in order to advance his dark agendas within the earth and this nation. So it's a starting device for the beginning of a race. This is a race, and it's also a war. And we are soldiers in the army of the living God, ordained by God to run the race that is set before us. This is why at the Olympics, in their opening ceremonies for the races and competitions that proceed, they do ceremonies that open gates that summon dark powers for them to succeed. They do something very similar with the Olympics. So starting gate, stargate. A gate that is the starting point when open for a race. This is why the occult is built upon fear and competition. It truly is a race for the enemy to pervert, destroy, kill, and steal as much as possible before Armageddon in the Valley of Megiddo. In fact, Mount Carmel, where Elijah the prophet challenged the prophets of Baal and Ashtoreth and called down fire from heaven to consume the sacrifice, that mountain looks down into Megiddo. I stood on it myself when we went to Israel. Mount Carmel literally looks down into that area where Megiddo, into that valley where Armageddon is going to happen. So Project Stargate goes back to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. A tempting piece of fruit was dangled before the U.S. government, the CIA to be specific. Genesis 3, 1 through 7 gives this account. Now the serpent was more crafty than any living creature of the field which the Lord had made. And the serpent said to the woman, can it really be that God has said you shall not eat from any tree of the garden? Now, that's not what God said. He said, you shall eat from any tree of the garden. You can't eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So the enemy's manipulating it. And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat fruit from the trees of the garden, except the fruit from the tree, which is in the middle of the garden. God said, you shall not eat from it, nor touch it. Otherwise you will die. Don't touch it or you will die. But the serpent said to the woman, you certainly will not die. There's the lie. For God knows that on the day you eat from it, your eyes will be open. That, there's that little bit of truth mixed in. Their eyes would be open with a slew of consequences. And you will become like God, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was delightful to look at and a tree to be desired in order to make one wise and insightful. So desiring something that'll make you wiser 
and more insightful. She took some of its fruit and ate it. And she also gave some to her husband with her and he ate. Then the eyes of the two of them were opened. So the, uh, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was a gate. The Lord wanted to remain closed because once it was open, death and bloodshed would come. The serpent tempted and made the case that partaking would make them wise and insightful and they would become like God. Knowing good from evil, they would know the secrets of God, being able to view what God views. So keep this in mind for a moment. Biblically speaking, when the king of Israel listened to the prophets, they were safe from their regional enemies. And there was a covering of protection and the gates were closed to Israel's enemies and they could not enter an attack. So the enemy needs the cooperation of man always in his plans in order for them to be activated and gates and portals to open. So now keeping all of this in mind, in 1963, you have prayer being taken out of school. You have the Supreme Court decision, Engel versus Vitale. Esther is licking the camera right now on top of the computer, just so, just so you all know she's hanging out back there. So you have prayer taken out of school. You have the Supreme Court decision, Engel versus Vitale comes down, which lifted the covering, which exposed the gate and the code to the gate. The Soviets around this time are taking part in occultic practices of remote viewing and astral projection against the U.S. to steal classified information. The shepherd of the land, Kennedy, is assassinated, which shed the blood that ratified the lifting of the covering when prayer was taken out of schools. So the groundwork then was laid for Project, Project Stargate to be dangled as a tempting piece of fruit before the United States government that it would make them wise and insightful and they would know secrets that they didn't know. This project brought a curse on America and that curse came with horrible implications. Taking prayer to school came first. Abortion's gonna come into play soon in this. Interestingly enough, inside the word Pentagon and Dagon are very similar. In fact, they have A-G-O-N, both of them in their names. Um, and it was there that you're going to hear that the, the one that used to lead Project Stargate that has since become saved met with Dr. Crum and had a lot of guilt about what happened. And interestingly enough, they met at a Starbucks and Dagon is half man, half fish. Dagon Pentagon, I just find that interesting. And you'll hear about that in a moment. So, oh yeah, see? Yep, there it is. I hate that mermaid. Okay, so, <laughs> walk by a Starbucks. I look at it, I go, I hate that mermaid. Okay, so December 1972, something changes with Project Stargate. So they, this tempting piece of fruit is dangled by the enemy now that he's lifted the covering by taking the prayer to schools. He has... Um, ratified that with the death of Kennedy. And in December, 1972, something changed with Project Stargate. And Dr. Crum gives this account because the man that led Project Stargate spoke to him about this. A demonic principality physically manifested in the room because they started Project Stargate and they had clairvoyance and mediums and psychics astral projecting and remote viewing to try to steal from the Soviets. So in December of 1972, a demonic principality finally physically manifests in the room. And Dr. Crumb gives this account and basically a ruling demonic power within the earth manifests in the room at Fort Meade in December of 1972. Those in that room, the members of the CIA, did a deal with that demonic entity and made a covenant, this is what Dr. Crumb says, that if it would give them an advancement over the Russians and more power for remote viewing and astral projection techniques for intelligence gathering purposes, they would give that demonic entity rights over America. So this at Fort Meade, Meade, happens. And because they were at the helm of government, they were able to do such. 
Guess who was the president in 1972 when this happened? Nixon. You ever wonder then why it was named Watergate? Because Stargate came first. So Nixon is the president while this is going on. Making deals with devils and sealing doctrines of devils to, quote, beat the Russians out of fear and competition because the enemy was able to get close enough to dangle a tempting piece of fruit in front of you that would make you more wise and insightful. After he lifts the covering by taking prayer to schools and 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 assassinates the shepherd in the land. Many say the CIA was involved in Kennedy's assassination. So there you go. You see? So when that covenant was made, December of 1972, Dr. Crumb said a, a month later. So the covenant is made 1972. A month later, the covenant was ratified. Remember, there has to be the shedding of blood to ratify a covenant. The covenant was ratified a month later because in January 22nd, 1973, abortion was legalized. Abortion was legalized one month after they made this agreement with this principality and power to give them rights over America, to give them more power in remote viewing and astral projection to beat the Russians. One month after this deal gets made with this principality, abortion gets legalized. The covenant was made with this ruler of darkness. Innocent blood was shed. It ratified the covenant and things began to get dark in the United States of America. And to continue abortion, the enemy very craftily came up with my body, my choice, when really it's your body, but Satan's choice because of the covenant that was made. You are helping the kingdom of darkness continue their dark exploits when you're helping them ratify something through blood. And it's not your body, your choice, because that baby is another life. It's not your lung or your liver. That is your body, your choice. And I don't see many women lining up demanding their liver or lungs be cut out of them and destroyed and discarded. I found out something interesting from something Charlie Kirk said. He said, fetus in Latin means little human. They go, oh, it's just a fetus. It's just a fetus because they think the public is too stupid to gain the knowledge that fetus means little human. Imagine if they start saying, oh, it's just a little human. Oh, it's just a little human. Imagine how many less abortions would take place. They bank on you not knowing. So America became the first down payment and installment of innocent blood to seal and activate a covenant that our government made with that principality and power of darkness. After the covenant and abortion was legalized, child trafficking began to get traction in America. Why? Because the enemy needed an influx now of innocent blood to come in to continue this covenant. I know this is this is horrific stuff, but this is what happened. And so basically, then you have all these concerns rising about youth um, and sex trafficking during times of, of social change happening in the nation. However, the blood of Jesus Christ provided a more powerful covenant and a more powerful ratifying. And the covenant our founding fathers made with God at the beginning and inception of this nation So because that covenant was made and the enemy manufactures and counterfeits what the Lord does because he had plans for his own covenant. The enemy cannot create. He can only steal and manipulate and manufacture what already exists. So the blood of Jesus is far more powerful than the blood being shed to keep that dark covenant active. And if the church would just get a hold of this that covenant would be null and void because innocent blood is always required to open up demonic gates, to open up portals, to open up gates of nations, of cities. The kingdom of darkness has a requirement. So what happens then around the time that 
as my dogs are running around like lunatics, as around the time that this demonic principality manifests, right? And <laughs> uh, what is going on, all of you? My goodness, they're all playing. They're all just going a little batty right now. So the two of them, Missy and Cyrus, do this all the time. Cyrus, honey, you have to calm down. So at the time that this principality manifests and at the time that abortion ratifies the covenant, something else is happening. Watergate, right? You have Stargate that opened up a gate and now you have Watergate coming on the heels of Project Stargate. And the Watergate scandal was a major political controversy in the United States during the presidency of Richard Nixon from 1972 to 1974. And ultimately, Nixon, we all knew, resigned. The name originated from the attempts by the Nixon administration to conceal its involvement in an apparent break-in at the Democratic National Committee headquarters located in the Watergate office building in Washington, D.C. So this is by no accident that Watergate happens in the middle of all these other events happening that are opening up gates in the nation. So after Stargate, after abortion, you have in the middle of this, you have Watergate uh, begins to grow now and grip the nation, right? So there is a whole faction of the kingdom of darkness called the Marine Kingdom, Watergate. Keep this in mind. There are, there are factions in the kingdom of darkness. You have the powers of the air. There's another faction called the Marine Kingdom. And the, the Philistine false god Dagon, half man, half fish, was a part of that. So you have now a water gate that is opened up in the nation. Also, Palestine, uh, Palestine means Philistine. Keep this in mind because this was a very ancient demon that those in the CIA made an agreement with. This is a very ancient spirit. And so Palestine means Philistine. And so this is why the name Watergate, that occurs while Stargate is occurring. And this is the price of making deals with devils. It is. It's a very high price. They, I'm going to tell you right now, you people out there, if you are astral projecting, remote viewing, talking to the dead, stop it and repent because demons that give information require a very high price in return. And it gives them rights to attack your families, your children, to attack your bodies, to attack your health. <clears throat> it gives them rights. So please stop it because it's dangerous. So This is why Watergate happens. And this is the price that's paid for making deals with devils. Under Nixon, that door was opened. And then Nixon's removal happened. Because humanity is only a means to their end. Demons don't care about humanity. We're a means to their end. That's all we are to them. The enemy allures you to enslave you. Almighty God allures you to set you free to embrace you and set you free. So when the door was opened for Nixon's removal, when all of this happens, all the pagan gods, the Philistines, uh, the gods of these pagan nations, the Moabites, the Amalekites, the Canaanites, all these pagan gods had one thing in common. They demanded the blood of innocent children in order for those nations to prosper. In fact, they would go to the poorest in those nations and tell them, if you sacrifice your baby, you will greatly prosper. The Canaanites, the Amorites, the Amalekites, the Moabites. That argument has been taken for modern day and refurbished like a used car and sold to a modern generation. Because between my body, my choice, and the argument made that having a baby will get in the way of a woman's career of a woman's prospering. Give up your baby and you will prosper. It is the same argument that these pagan nations and these demonic principalities made to get those to give up their children. 
And to provide further evidence of this, in Africa, Dr. Crum said this, when a witch or witch doctor wants to dedicate a piece of land to Satan, the first thing they want to do is get blood and put it in the ground. So in Africa, when they want to do this, this is how they do it. Because for that covenant to be activated, they have to go to make a sacrifice of blood and to get that favor of the demon of the land. This is why in Luke chapter 8, that fierce storm was sent against Jesus and his disciples as they made their way to Gadaran because Jesus was about to overturn the offerings the dark rulers of that territory were getting and evangelize the city. Not only by delivering the possessed man at Gadaran who went on to evangelize the whole city, but the incident with the pigs. We'll call it pig gate. Since we're talking about gates, we're going to call this pig gate in Luke chapter 8. And it says, Luke chapter 8, verses 27 through 33. Now, when Jesus stepped out on the land, he was met by a man from the city who was possessed with demons. For a long time, he had worn no clothes and was living and was not living in a house, but among the tombs. He was living among the dead. Seeing Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him and shouted loudly. What business do we have in common with each other, Jesus, son of the most high God? I beg you, do not torment me. Now he was already commanding the unclean spirit to come out of the man, for it had seized him violently many times. And he was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles, but he would break the bonds and be driven by the demons into the desert because demons like dry places. Then Jesus asked him, what is your name? And he answered legion because many demons had entered him and they continually begged him not to command them to go into the abyss. Now a large herd of pigs was feeding there on the mountain. The demons begged Jesus to allow them to enter the pigs. You know why? Those pigs were going to be used as a sacrifice to the demons of that area and that blood was going to be shed. And he gave them permission. Then the demons came out of the man, entered the pigs, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. So there was really no shedding of innocent blood. Jesus sort of pulled a fast one on these demonic principalities that wanted to keep a stronghold on this area. So when... Entities get rights to areas, they will send storms, cause violence, shed innocent blood, and do whatever they have to do to hold on to that territory. And this is exactly what happened when this happened with Project Stargate and what progressed from it. And so Project Morningstar was the righteous counter to Project Stargate. So Morningstar were the prophets being given hard intelligence and seeking the Lord. And I'm going to tell you, 1977, not long after all this happens, the movie Star Wars comes out. So the movie Star Wars comes out in 1977 after Project Stargate opened an enormous gate in America. That is no coincidence that that is when that movie came out. And so the Lord... Dr. Crum says had a redemptive plan with Project Morningstar being implemented. Um, Kim Clement was a part of that. Um, and uh, basically, they tried to create a righteous counter to what Project Stargate had done. Because God has a redemptive plan for America. And he loves America so much that he would give America another chance. So very close to all of these events happening. Henry Kissinger and Klaus Schwab get together. So these events of the 70s, right? Henry Kissinger and Klaus Schwab join forces with the World Economic Forum. And they create the World Economic Forum in 1971. Okay? So by then, Project Stargate had been in operation. And the Soviets were were doing their own form. And interestingly enough, it was in 1987 that they broadened and started including um, others. So basically, they started opening up to uh, executives at first and things of that nature. And then they started to, in the, in the mid-70s, open it up to political figures. But I'm going to read you an interesting fact. In February of 1971... Schwab invited 450 executives 
from Western Europe firms to the first European management symposium held in Davos. He invites 450. How many prophets of Baal were there? 450. That's by no accident because the enemy works in cycles. So while Stargate is opening up a gate in America and all of this is unfolding and prayer is taken out of schools and Kennedy is assassinated, the World Economic Forum is being formed. And then political leaders by 1974 were invited to Davos. So they opened it up to them in 1974. So January 1974, Two years after the covenant was made and abortion legalized and the covenant ratified, the World Economic Forum starts inviting political leaders. This is by no mistake. This is how the enemy operates. And their initial invite was to 450 executives and there were 450 prophets of Baal. And Dr. Crum was saying how worship and repentance closes demonic gates. And he took a bunch of intercessors and attempted to close that gate. However, what that gate being opened let into the United States of America, all of those dark powers established themselves in the United States of America. So what we're dealing with today is darkness that flooded in by a covenant by our government through an open gate that though... Dr. Crumb believes it was shut. I think that gate is not totally shut. Now, I, just from what I'm watching, I'm not too sure this gate totally shut. But he's saying at this, at this time we're in right now, we still have to round up the cattle that got out. So the cattle that got through the gate and got out, we still now have to round them up, according to Dr. Crumb. So meaning all the demons that got loose through that gate, well, they have to be rounded up and sent back to where they came from. I believe when Roe v. Wade was overturned 50 years after abortion was ratified to cement a covenant that was made through Project Stargate, 50 being the Jubilee, where what was stolen must be given back, that gate began to majorly close. So I believe that that, that gate may have partially closed. And it started, that gate started to majorly close and, and get narrower and narrower. However, either part of the gate is still open or there were so many entities that got through the gate, like Dr. Crumb says, it, they have to be rounded up and sent back to where they came from. So we are called kings and priests. And that for us to be called kings and priests, that cost Jesus his blood on the cross. For us to be given that authority. The power that raised Christ from the dead dwells within us. And we have to remember that. He says, behold, I have given unto you power to trample upon serpents and scorpions and all the power of the enemy. So nothing shall by any means hurt you. Something similar going on at CERN that is affecting Europe. CERN is, CERN is attempting to do the same thing and open a very dangerous gate to the kingdom of darkness. <clears throat> That's why they do their ceremonies before... They turn on their, was it the Large Hadron Collider? They do these very dark ceremonies. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to show you something else. It was in the early 1960s that the Russians started this astral projecting remote viewing. And this is tied to that, but it's also tied to something else. So currently what we're dealing with the attempt on Trump's life, July 13th, 2024, 7 plus 13 plus 20 plus 24 equals 64. When the Soviets were using remote viewing against the United States and the covering had been lifted by taking prayer out of schools, um, prayer had just been taken out of school at this point by 1964. The second attempt on Trump's life was September 15th, 2024. 9 plus 15 plus 20 plus 24 equals 64. So 1964 is connected to what happened to Trump. But also something else is connected because the enemy works in cycles. Go back 100 years 
because I talked about 100-year cycles from 1964 to 1864. 1864 was the Civil War. That is why these dates line up. This is why they were attempting to assassinate him on these certain dates, because they really want another civil war. They want to start another civil war. They want to go the American people because they want to have enough blood to get this whole gate back open. They want, an, if the assassination of Kennedy lifted the covering Right. If, if prayer being taken out of schools lifted the covering and the assassination of Kennedy and the shedding of blood ratified that covering, then the assassination of Trump would have done the same thing. It would have ratified their ability to reopen the gate. This is how serious this is. This is how serious what they did back in, in, in the 1960s and 70s. So the assassination of Trump would have been the, 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 the assassination of a shepherd in order to reopen a gate they desperately want to get open because it's either almost closed or closed and all the demons are still running around that got through this gate. So 2 Kings 3, 26 through 27 um, gives a picture of this. And it says, when the king of Moab saw that the battle was too fierce for him, he took with him 700 men who drew swords to break through to the king of Edom, but they could not. Then he took his oldest son, who was to reign in his place, and offered him as a burnt offering on the wall. And there came great wrath against Israel, and they departed from him and returned to their own land. So the sacrifice was made on the wall when the battle became too fierce for Israel's opposition. The oldest sacrificed on a wall. What is one of the biggest contentions right now in the country? Immigration, the wall, and child trafficking that's coming through there, along with drugs, the cartel, and military-age fighting men. And sometimes I think that the shepherd of the nation, the man that wants to be the shepherd of the nation, the man that wants to be the father to the nation, needs to repent for the nation publicly and ask the Lord to permanently close that gate and lock it if it's still open. With those who hold the prophetic office, ask the Lord to lock it, seal it with the blood of Jesus. Something like this needs to happen because the enemy is desperately trying to reopen this gate wide and he's using similar events. Now I'm going to show you the mirror image of this. So prayer is taken out of school <clears throat> and then Kennedy is killed to ratify that, to take the covering off the gate. Okay. What just happened recently before Trump's assassination attempts? The Ten Commandments in prayer is coming back into schools. It's starting to make its way back into schools. So the kingdom of darkness panics and they try then to kill the shepherd like they did back in the 1960s to ratify it. So then they can reopen the gate and stop the advance of prayer coming back into schools. And I'm going to tell you something else because we're talking about Russia too. And Russia is communist. <clears throat> and this forward together that Kamala Harris has adopted ties back to Russia and communism. So this is all connected. On the Communist Party USA website, you go look stuff for yourself. They adopted the slogan forward together before Kamala Harris took it on. Obama's second term campaign slogan was forward. Hillary Clinton's was stronger together. And in May 2017, Hillary Clinton announces a new action group called Onward Together. So Kamala's Forward Together combines Obama's, Hillary's, and the Communist Party slogan, all wrapped up into a nice little bow. Because they want to push this gate fully open again. Forward Together, they want the agreement to ratify their agenda in the realm of the spirit. There it is. Communist Party USA website. Forward together. April 17th, 2024. 
building block and build against fascism. You know who they're calling fascists? The MAGA supporters. They're calling the, the MAGA supporters who want freedom and liberty, which is freedom with responsibility, the fascists. You know why? Because one of the enemy's go-to tactics is to deflect and accuse you of the very thing he's doing. So Kamala's forward together is Obama, Hillary, and the Communist Party all rolled into one because they want to push this gate fully open again. And the Communist Party adopted this back in April, well, April 17th, they wrote about this 2024, but apparently they've been using this slogan for like, I don't know, almost a decade. Now we have another article from the Communist Party website to show you how dangerous this game of Russian roulette, no pun intended, is that 24 would be 100 years from the time of Lenin's death. They are attempting to resurrect that same spirit and mindset that influenced and controlled Lenin. It's not a revolution war, as they claim. It's a revelationary war. This is what this is. And the shepherds need to stand in the gap at the sheep gate. You got Stargate. You got Watergate. Well, it's about time some shepherds stood up and stood in front of the sheep gate against the predators that have come in to steal, kill, and destroy. I will tell you, there are orders that have gone out from the kingdom of darkness against the elders, the shepherds, the men that are pillars in their community. Pray and intercede because it's an order that has gone out against the shepherds and the elders. And it's about time we stood at the sheep gate and prevented the predators from coming into that too because they already started pouring into the church. And once prayer was taken out of school and the enemy gained that advantage that that intercession was nullified, he was able to ratify what we saw happen in the 60s, in the 70s. He was able to ratify it and the effects lead all the way to now what we're seeing. The effects lead to now. And this is why we have to be watchmen and watch women on the wall right now. Watch men and watch women because watch men and women see what's coming before it comes. They see what they're doing. They see the patterns. <clears throat> they see the attacks coming. They see it and they sound the alarm, whether it sounds nice or not. They sound the alarm. We have to sound the alarm. August 16, 2024, the Lord told me in that word that danger was near President Trump's front door, meaning Mar-a-Lago, that he was going to be caught in the crossfire. Come quickly to me now, the Lord said, because you're in the crossfire again. And in that word, too, it said it was going to be they were going to paint it that it was a Trump supporter that did it. It was going to be a red flag of falsities that painted it as a Trump supporter, which is exactly what the media did. I have a pastor friend that met that man in Ukraine. Got into an altercation with him. And I'm going to be putting that out in a short. But we have to be watchmen and women right now. And understand that the enemy is going to try to open gates. He's going to try to entice government agencies with tempting pieces of fruit. He's going, that'll make them more wise and insightful and make them know more. He's, he's, he's out in, in desperation right now. And in desperation and rage, he has ordered from the kingdom of darkness attacks against the elders and the shepherds and the pillars of the community to try to get them out of the way because he desperately wants this gate back open. He wants this gate that started with Stargate, that started with prayer being taken out of schools, with Kennedy's death, with the blood being shed, with the covering being lifted and ratified that way. He desperately wants this gate back open. So please pray, intercede, be watchmen and women right now, be in the word, that your sword of the spirit is the word of God. 
we are meant to be salt and light in the earth. Light exposes. Salt preserves. It is the remnant and the believers and the body of Christ that has to help preserve this nation. So it's time you stood up and do your jobs because we have to do it. If you don't want to see this gate back open because there's a dark army, the likes of which we've never seen that, that are just like bulls huffing and puffing waiting to get through that gate again. And it's the church, the ecclesia, the body of Christ who has the resurrection power of Christ in us. That can stand in the gap, intercede. And make sure that doesn't happen. And that can speak to the tomb. That America has been put in that tomb of Sodom, that cold, dark tomb. Like Lazarus was put in and Jesus comes when they said, if you had been here sooner, my brother wouldn't have died. And he says, I am the resurrection. We have that power dwelling within us to speak to the death that they are trying to put over this nation and send it in retreat and cause God to issue judgment against the principalities and powers running around this nation that were let through that gate. That are screaming right now, what we have to do with you, son of the most high God, because that power dwells within us. So be watch men and women right now in the middle of this because it's so necessary. Okay. There is a speed bump on the front. There is a speed bump on the front. <laughs> 